Hey Justin, thanks for uh, your intervention. I thought I'd just do a quick tutorial just to show you the basics of the Puppet tool in action. So um, I guess I'm going to replicate your uh, stroke path by just creating a little solid there. Um, the main thing is that whatever you have, you need to pre-compose it before you use the Puppet tool. So just move all the attributes in a new composition and then you just select the Puppet tool and create the Puppet points as you would the joints in the non-Puppet tool inverse kinematics version and then you go down to your puppet mesh get your pins and wherever there's a pin you need to create a bone so let's create them there and there and then you just need to decide which of these bones will carry your controller so let's put one at the bottom there and then you parent them together as you would in the other version like that so that one to that one and that one to that one and then select them in the same way as well. So first select the bottom one, second and the third, and then your controller, and then just hit inverse kinematic. And hey presto, you've got yourself an inverse kinematic. Now obviously um, with this, if you want this swinging, you at some point need to flick over the checkbox on the swing there. So the way that I've been doing that in terms of the animation is let's say you start up here I put a keyframe there and I also add the um, the position and the rotation keyframes and then I would just move it forward to a point and move my animation forward so now obviously when you switch the uh, direction of the inverse kinematic it's quite an abrupt change so I found that it's, if you want it seamless, you really need to get to a straight position. Um, so in this case, what I would do is I would, I would get it there so that the position keyframe is in place. Then I would go one frame back and just add a, um, a keyframe for the checkbox so that when I go back to the, to the next frame, I can then untick it and there won't be any change. And then I can move it forward and it will be swinging the other way and then I can go the other way again go backward one set the keyframe go forward tick it again and then just move it there and as you can see I just have that because my computer is bit slow uh, and you can also hide these bones so you don't see them and then you can see you get a pretty lifelike swing um, I've been messing around with this in class and it's pretty fun and everyone always gets pretty excited when they see it you see you get a really nice organic swing so that's the basic principle of it um, in your case, uh, you, I guess, want to do an S, and the way that I figured a way around that is just to create that. I think what you would do is, well, first of all, pre-compose it, and I would actually create two inverse kinematics, so let's see, I would start one here for the S, that is, and... Right, so once again, you go down to the deformers and add a bone for each of the puppet points. And then so you want to curl the bottom up and the top down to create the S. So at the top, I would create a controller and at pin one I would create a controller as well and then I would parent them together so one to two two to three so that one to that one that one to that one and then going from the top back down again so five to four and four to three and then um, I would probably just rename these For convenience sake and then just 
select them in the right order, select the controller, create an inverse kinematic there, and then the other way around, so from the top going down and hit the top controller and create an inverse kinematic there as well. So you've got two inverse kinematics, and I'm not sure which way, let's see, we can hide all these bones, and this one here, okay, so you want that to break the other way, and this one here also break the other way. So there you have it. You could let's see. You've got your stroke path, or in my case, a solid. I would position it, rotate it, move that forward, and then whoops, a daisy. Move that one there and curl that one up. So there you have it. I mean, I don't know if that's as slick as you want it, but that's the basic principle, so I'm sure you can uh, play around with that. I'm gonna do a, I'll do a more extensive tutorial where I'll try and do a full rig using this, um, which is a little bit fiddlier than the other version. But uh, yeah, anyways, hopefully this will help you out. And thanks again for your kind intervention. Um, it certainly helped me out, so thanks.